Alright, so I wanted to go over the uh, wrappers that we built for SolidWorks Inventor. In this video, we'll go over the SolidWorks wrapper. So, for those not familiar with what a wrapper is, it's just we take our, we'll just write some code that wraps around somebody else's code. In this case, we're wrapping around the code for the .NET interops that SolidWorks built for us to use to communicate with SolidWorks. So, the basic first step is just to add a reference to those, re to those interops. So, here you can see in the top of our project, it's referencing those uh, DLLs that SolidWorks had built for us to use. So, the kind of the purpose of this wrapper was to make ETL work a bit easier. Uh, it's not really focused on building add-ins. So, this really just focuses on just communicating with SolidWorks. There are some wrappers out there that other, the other people in the community have built that focus completely on add-ins if you're more interested in building add-ins for SolidWorks. Um, if you're a little bit more interested in ETO type work, I think this is a pretty appropriate wrapper. So I figured we'd get started. So you see at the top of the top of the file, we're seeing just a reference to the actual SolidWorks source object. So everything that we're going to be doing is a manipulation against the source object that SolidWorks provides from the interop. So and here's a couple of event handlers we have for listening to changes in the active document in SolidWorks. So these are these don't activate on by default. So if you have an application that needs to listen. So just activate these at the beginning and then you just tell it to stop listening when you're done. And this guy, he gets called every time the actual document changes. You see here we're subscribing to SolidWorks. So this is actually a method in SolidWorks, not in the wrapper. Active doc change notify and then we're going to say every time that hits we're going to fire our event that tells that tells anything that's listening the document has changed. So what we need to do when we first get started, we need to attach to a running instance of SolidWorks or create a new instance. So here, we're going to try to get the active SolidWorks application. And if we fail, we'll go and try to instantiate one. So we'll go and so get type of prog ID. So all that's doing is just checking the registry table to see if there's a SolidWorks application installed. And if there is, it will go and create the instance of it. And it'll create the instance of it and just set it to visible as true. And if it cannot, it'll throw an error at the end and that it was unable to get or start SolidWorks. Okay, and this is just a secondary method that checks if we are actually attached to SolidWorks. So this can be useful if you're in a running something that's kind of complicated. Unfortunately, SolidWorks can be unstable and crash at times. So what it'll do. If SolidWorks is null, it will return false, that is not attached, and if SolidWorks is not null, so one thing that we can happen since we're kind of running a little bit detached from SolidWorks, is we'll go and double check to make sure that we can run a method against SolidWorks, and if we can, we'll go and return true, if not, we'll throw an error, and we'll just set SolidWorks, when we return false, that lets us know we need to reattach. Oh, and so here we're just getting the active document from SolidWorks. So we've actually, we've wrapped the application and the document. So we'll kind of take a look at the document wrap real quick. So this is these are actually all wrapper methods. So these are wrappers around the equation managers, the custom property manager, and the components. So we've kind of just done a general wrapping of the SolidWorks document. Um, so we see we've got the a reference to SolidWorks iModel doc, the iModel doc extension, which is a series of extension properties and methods that I think they were just added on later in the development cycle of the interops. And these are the properties that we pre built into the wrapper. So we're going out and grabbing the name, which is we're just grabbing the file name without the extension. And these are all just calling the source. Uh, the source methods from the solder interop. And here we're actually getting all the configurations from SolidWorks. And we're just turning them into a .NET list so we can use the link against them a bit easier. And here we're getting the type of the document that's open. So SolidWorks stores them all as integers whenever you get a type. They do have their own set of enum libraries. In this case, I just went and built my own versions of them, um, just so they could all exist in the wrapper. That way, you didn't have to. That way, you didn't have to reference a whole other set of them. 
one thing I was trying to do is make sure you didn't have to... Is As the interrupts change over time, it allows us to have a single point to them. <coughs> and these methods, just double check to see what kind of document we have. So, just depending on what type the document was set as, it'll go and return a value based on that. So, and these guys just instantiate the equation manager so they can track all the equations. So this is a case where the corrections are a little complicated in SOLIDWORKS. So what we'll do is we'll go and loop through them all and just store them in our, store them in this guy is actually inheriting from the list object of a SOLIDWORKS equation. So it allows us to store all those in there because SOLIDWORKS doesn't actually have an array that we can directly point to. We have to access them by index like this. Um, so just turning them into a list makes them a bit easier to work with. We'll just keep going down. So we have the, you can activate a document, open a document, and we can close all the documents. So I thought it might be useful just to show how you could use this maybe outside of the tool I built. So let's go and get started. Just we're going to do something really simple. So we're going to close the solution real quick. And we're going to create a new project. So we're just going to create a quick uh, Windows format. And do make sure we're running the .NET framework. The .NET Core one won't work with the wrappers. And we'll just get any name you'd like. All right, so the first thing we're going to need to do is we need to install the NuGet package. So we're going to go and say Manage NuGet Packages. So let's go and browse for that SolidWorks one. So you can see there's already a ton of them. So we're going to download the one that I created. Okay, and now to get going to see a basic test of it. So let's go into our form one. And we're just going to view the code. We're just going to quickly type in solar application dot attach. So this will allow us to attach to a running instance of SOLIDWORKS or instantiate a new one. And what we'll do, just to say, if we did, we're going to say if SOLIDWORKS application dot attached. Oh, and that's a property, not a method. We'll say message box dot show success. All right, so let's go ahead and run that real quick. And Visual Studio is a really nice platform to develop out of because you can set breakpoints pretty easily in it without too much fuss. Right, so let's go ahead and step through this real quick. So it's going to take a little bit to run as it attaches to SOLIDWORKS. All right, and now we have SOLIDWORKS up and running. So let's double check to see if we attach. And we can see where attach is true, so we'll get a message box of success. All right, so now that we've got something running now, see our form pops up now. So now that we actually have a SOLIDWORKS instance running, we can actually run this side by side real quick. And we'll run the same thing again real quick. So we'll run it through. So it's So we're going to go and attach the SOLIDWORKS. Attached. So it runs really quick now this time, so it didn't have to instantiate a version. And we'll just show success again. So so now let's go and open a simple document up. Okay, now we've got this document open now. So, what we're going to do a run through. So, if SOLIDWORKS is attached, we'll just do a quick SOLIDWORKS application dot 
active document dot name and solar wants us to do and C sharp expects us to do something with it. So we're gonna say var name equals that. And then we'll say solarworks.active app dot active document dot close. And I'll just allow us to close that real quick. So let's go ahead and run that through again. Okay, and you see that matches our name up here. And then we're going to close it. And our form opens up. So let's go and open that back up. So let's say, and pretty much anything you can do in the automation designer tool you could do in this. So if you're more, if you have an application, then would you rather write the code for instead of using a low code solution? You could do it this way too. So probably the more efficient way to go about the next step is let's go and get a reference to that document. So we'll go say var document, and we'll say blocks equals solidworks dot application dot active document. So now we get a reference to it. So this is a type solidworks document now. So let's go and say if blocks dot is assembly document. In this case, we know it is. We'll say blocks dot get Let's go ahead and run that through real quick. We'll actually just step through it this time. So we're going to go and get the active document. And if it's a assembly document, we'll go and grab all the children real quick. And we can see it's got two children, just like we're seeing in the model. So these are type components. So we got see we have example one and example two. Well, this is a quick demo of how you could use the wrapper. Um, pretty much, if you have any questions about how to use it, let me know. Um, the looking at the code for the automation designer is probably a good way to see how to interact with the wrapper. I don't want to make this video too long. I just want to show that if you had some interest in it, you could directly interrupt with uh, SolarWorks just using the wrapper. And I, there was a couple questions about the wrapper in previous videos, and I just wanted to go over it. All right, thanks for listening.